We're all quite familiar with the concept now. You place an order online and 24 to 48 hours later, it's on your doorstep. To the average consumer, the process seems pretty simple, but behind the scenes of a shipping giant like UPS, it's anything but simple. We got a rare behind the scenes look at the headquarters in Atlanta and the Air Hub here at Worldport in Louisville, Kentucky. We learned that there's really no end in sight for the company's digital transformation. Gone are the days of waiting weeks to get packages delivered from grandma or our favorite retailer. Our expectations of a quick ship are fueling companies like UPS to invest in and develop new technology to make it all happen. From big data and artificial intelligence to virtual reality and the Internet of Things, logistics companies are harnessing every bit of technology to meet the demands of e-commerce and plan for what's to come. We wanted to know more about what's driving this company's ability to get packages from point A to B with such precision. The command center inside the super hub in Atlanta seemed like a good place to start. This employee, who resembles an air traffic controller of sorts, paces behind a blur of monitors as he catches a weather report out of the corner of his eye. It's his job, and the others in this room, to carefully weigh the daily factors associated with transporting millions of packages. So before automation, you didn't have the opportunity to make changes and, and make granular changes to the network so you can see how the packages are optimized. Rob Papetti was our tour guide for the day. He described to us how the company's network planning tools, or NPT for short, are changing the game. It's a big data solution that gives a bird's eye view of the volume currently in the network and the peaks and valleys that are expected. So you're looking at everything we're introducing today and everything that's moving through the network um, at the same time. So whether it's on a train, whether it's in a trailer, whether it's moving in an aircraft, we know what is moving throughout the network and then we have the addition of the data that of all, everything that's being introduced to the network. Artificial intelligence and machine learning are layered in to optimize the flow. Predictive analysis allows the company to better plan for bottlenecks within the supply chain. The impact of tricky weather patterns and traffic snarls can now be lessened as routes are changed on the fly. And what we do is we have an operations research team that continuously looks at those algorithms and uses machine learning to find new ways to group these things and um, um, create the best forecast into the future. And as the control center looks to distribute the loads, the workers inside the hub keep the flow moving. A dizzying maze of conveyor belts, chutes, scanners, and other high-tech equipment fills the 1.2 million square foot facility. Cameras scan every package from multiple sides after they're loaded in. Now we're reading the label and getting the dimensions and the weight of each piece as it moves through. The intersection of humans and automation can be seen throughout the building. Driverless tugs move loads from one end of the building to another as automatic feeders take cues from the network planning tools to determine which packages will go down which chute. UPS's story of digital transformation started as far back as the 80s when the first handheld device was introduced to drivers. CIO Juan Perez says there really is no end point for their transformation. In all my business discussions with my business partners and in my own engineering function, it's rare when we have a discussion that doesn't involve some form of technology, where technology doesn't provide uh, some way to differentiate UPS or help our people do their jobs better or support us in being more efficient, being more effective. So technology is just part of the normal conversation. It's not like IT sitting out there and you know, IT becomes an after, afterthought, right? Where you start having all these kinds of business discussions and then you say, well, now let's bring the IT people in. I, I really don't think that we're there anymore. As an organization, IT has a great seat at the table. Uh, and in, in that position, we are capable of providing support to our business. We're capable of providing guidance. We support brainstorming sessions. We support uh, cre you know, creation of new products and services through IT. And quite frankly, IT and business today are just one. It's the way it's got to be if you want to be successful in the future. 
And looking towards the future, it's the power of data that excites Perez the most. Supply chains, he says, will have to be more nimble and react even quicker, and it's data that will make that possible. He also points out the company's hybrid cloud setup is making it easier for IT professionals to meet the needs of the business. And as the needs of the business change, it's UPS's advanced technology group that's tasked with creating what's next. Bala Ganesh is the VP of the group. So the cool thing is looking forward and saying, what are all the things that's out there? What are the new technologies that are out there? And most of them are very speculative right now and saying, what bet should I need to put to make this something that I want to put some bet on? And some of them will work, some of them don't work, but at least now I'm starting to put the chips on the table. So I'm, I'm starting to see some returns in the long run, right? A good example of that investment can be seen in the company's new drone program. The unmanned flying vehicles are making waves on medical campuses and will no doubt play a bigger role down the road. And just recently, the FAA gave UPS the first full approval for a drone airline. That means UPS has the right to operate as many drones as it wants. Technology touches every corner of the business, even areas like the training department. Extensive programs involving virtual reality are being used to teach employees in a safe environment how to better do their job. Whether it be the drivers we see crisscrossing our neighborhoods every day or the workers inside the hub, AR and VR are changing the training game. And some technology that's not as obvious to the average person is having a significant impact on the company. IoT devices are being used throughout the UPS network. Over 100,000 smart trailer devices are attached to company assets, producing on average up to 60 million GPS messages alone every week. The ability to track company property so effectively produces a cost and time savings. Mike Allen explains. And we would show, you know, from a legacy perspective, how we manually track the information. The automation now with the intelligent device allows us to evaluate against that to now um, give us even a better location um, information about our devices. We look to make sure that we have a very trustworthy GPS information and when we evaluate that against our legacy systems, we then can create alerts or even reconcile against those systems automatically and that's where the real advantage does come into play. And while decisions are being made in Atlanta about future projects, the company's fleet of airplanes hums along about 400 miles away at Worldport in Louisville, Kentucky. Worldport is a city in and of itself. 251 heavy jets and another 300 small feeder aircraft fly in and out every day. Planes are seen taking off and landing at a mind-boggling cadence, while millions of packages are processed inside the hub. It's considered to be the largest automated sorting facility in the world. Inside the UPS jets, the floors are lined with an intricate system of rollers that hold in place the containers that house the packages. Once those containers are moved inside the hub, a meticulous process of sorting begins. The same technology in Atlanta is in play in Louisville. The results of automation are evident throughout the building. Jim Mayer gave us a look inside and explained how the facility operates in two shifts, morning and night. About 800,000 during the day, about another 1.2 million at night. Um, it's a lot of packages. It gets even busier at Christmas time. The week before Christmas, that 2 million doubles to more than 4 million. The wheels on the floor of the sorting hub guide containers throughout the day and night to conveyor belts where the packages are sorted by the information that's contained on a smart label. Because of the technology, things are very different now at Worldport. Years ago, our sorting was entirely manual, and so employees had to memorize literally hundreds of zip codes because you had to know, does it go on this belt or this belt or that belt? Now it's automated. It comes out of the container, it's read by a scanner. And from that point on, it, it is sorted through 155 miles of conveyor belts throughout this facility, comes out somewhere else, anywhere else in the building for an outbound flight. And the pilots benefit greatly from technology as they can now get up to the minute information on the fly. Up until even several years ago, pilots would carry a 40 or 50 pound uh, bag with all the flight manuals that they needed for the airplane. Now all that's contained on just an iPad. And so, you know, we've taken weight off the airplane, which of course saves fuel. Uh, we're helping out with the pilot's backs. It's not quite so heavy. 
and it's much more efficient and effective because those iPads can be updated practically automatically. Technology moves at a rapid pace and the logistics industry is in the midst of a technological revolution. More and more tools are being introduced to automate every facet of the supply chain. But the ability to balance what is hype, what is real, and what will sustain a company for years to come is a challenge. But it's one that UPS executives feel confident about tackling. We have, since the, the early days in which we brought in tech, digital technologies to UPS, we've been in that transformation journey, which, quite frankly, I don't think it's ever going to end. You know, we see it today, by the way, in the way that we're building technologies. The, the solutions that we're building today are supporting the business today, but they're also being built to support the needs of the future.